What's going on, sixpackabs.com. It's Thomas DeLauer, and I'm here to debunk another fitness myth. Don't lie to me, you're tired of eating every two hours too. I was so tired of eating every two hours that I decided to dive into the research. It makes a lot of sense, right? We're gonna stimulate our metabolism by eating every two hours. That's what the fitness industry and the general health community will have us believe. And again, in theory, it makes sense. Every time we eat, we stimulate metabolism. So consequently, if we eat every couple of hours, our metabolism increases. Wrong, okay? Part of it is true. We do have a small increase in metabolism every time we eat, but there are greater factors at play. We're talking about insulin, big hormones that play a big part in how our bodies utilize energy and store fat. So hear me out on this because I'm going to break down two very important reasons why eating every two hours is slowing you down more so than helping you when it comes to shredding up. In order for this video to make sense, I have to explain what insulin truly is. You've probably heard of it before, but what insulin is, is a hormone that is secreted by the pancreas. It's secreted by the pancreas in response to eating food in general. You see, insulin has a response to just about every food. If we consume carbohydrates, it allows the cell to absorb glucose. If we consume fat, it allows a fat cell to absorb fatty acids, or it'll break down protein into amino acids so that we can absorb that. So insulin has a role in virtually everything that we eat, and its job is to allow a cell to become receptive to whatever we've consumed, particularly glucose. So when we consume carbohydrates, it allows the cell to take in that glucose so that it can be stored later on for energy. Now, once insulin has done its job completely, meaning all the nutrients are absorbed into the cells and they're where they need to be, then and only then do insulin levels start to come back down. And when insulin levels come back down, that's when everything goes back to baseline. But what we have to remember, and this is key, is that when we have levels of insulin that are high, our bodies are in the absorptive phase. They're in the phase of absorbing nutrients of absorbing calories, absorbing things into the cell, not in the mode to actually burn them and utilize them. This effectively means that enzymes that are normally there to help burn fat aren't able to be there until the insulin levels drop. Okay, now let's look at how insulin works with fat cells, just so you have an idea. The way insulin sees fat is it ends up breaking fat down into fatty acids that are absorbed into the fat cell into a portion called the vacuole. And the vacuole is a portion of the cell that is sort of fluid-like, and it's like a big empty space, and it's expandable. So when insulin allows fatty acids into that cell, it expands, and that's how a fat cell grows. Again, you're in that absorptive phase. So how do we battle this issue? Because every time we increase insulin levels, we're stopping all fat burning, and we're in absorptive mode. So effectively, by eating constantly throughout the day, we're constantly having levels of insulin that are moderately elevated. Well, let me explain the second hormone that comes into place, and it's all going to make perfect sense. This other hormone is known as glucagon. Glucagon is essentially the enemy to insulin. Well, in a way, they're sort of frenemies. They work together, but they also are polar opposites. You see, it's the job of glucagon to take the energy that has already been stored by insulin and release it back into the cell to be used as energy now. So for example, if insulin allows carbohydrates to get stored in the cell inside the muscle or inside the liver, well then glucagon allows that energy to come out of the muscle and out of the liver to be used for energy now. Now glucagon has some serious fat burning properties because it does the same thing with fat cells. It encourages what's called lipolysis, and lipolysis is the utilization of fatty acids for energy. So those fat cells that are stored up with all the fatty acids from the insulin, well, glucagon now says, come out of the cell into the bloodstream and be burned. Now remember, glucagon can only release when insulin levels are low. So we have to take advantage of that valley, that special time when insulin levels drop and glucagon levels come up. But let me drop some crazy research on you that's very black and white. This one was published by the Journal of Comparative Physiological Psychology, and what they looked at was the difference between insulin and glucagon. Very cut and dried study. They took two groups of rats. One group of rats, they injected insulin. Another group of rats, they injected glucagon. They fed them the exact same thing at the same intervals. 
they exercise the same amount. Well, lo and behold, the rats that were injected with glucagon lost significantly more fat than those injected with insulin, thereby proving that insulin is the absorptive one and glucagon is the burning one. Now that's just one study, okay? That just proves what insulin and glucagon are. A lot of us know what that is already. But when it comes down to the meal frequency, we have to look at another study. And I'm gonna back that one up with some research as well. So yes, two research bombs. This one is a randomized crossover study that looked at 54 diabetic patients. Why diabetic patients? Because they're going to respond more with glucose and we can get more science out of them. What they looked at is two different groups. One group ate two meals per day, breakfast and lunch. The other group ate the same amount of calories split over six even meals throughout the day. Now, they wanted to monitor a few things. They wanted to monitor insulin, they wanted to monitor ghrelin, blood glucose, all these things. But at the end of the study, what they found was pretty darn cool. The group that only ate two meals per day, breakfast and lunch, ended up having lower levels of insulin, lower levels of blood glucose, increased levels of ghrelin, which is an appetite hormone, but also increased resting metabolic rate. You heard me right, sixpackabs.com. That's exactly what I'm saying. Eating two larger meals allowed them to burn more fat and have a higher resting metabolic rate than those that ate six square little meals throughout the day. Now, I'm no genius, but I know research when I see it. And I know the body enough to be able to parlay over to you the right information to get you in the best shape. So make sure you head on over to sixpackabs.com, check it out, and get the most out of your body, the most out of your mind, and quit eating every 90 minutes. You're just gonna burn out your pancreas. I'll see you in the next video.